Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Center of gravity is a term in physics that gets used in applied sciences in such seemingly unrelated and broad fields as motorcycle design and engineering, aircraft design, fixed wing or rotary, rigging and hoisting in the trades or wherever rigging and hoisting is used, shipbuilding, this is my deluxe boat here, and forklift operator certification just to name a few of the fields that seemingly have nothing to do with each other but alas it is not so center of gravity is a concept shared by all of these and this is not an exhaustive list of all the fields that use center of gravity just a representative sample or just a sample of uh, a few examples. In this video, I'll have more examples as we go along using these visuals. There's not a lot of math or no calculations to do. This is about explaining this concept of center of gravity through these examples. And as we go along, I'm gonna explain why this concept of center of gravity is so important and how it's affecting the design and uh, daily operation or safety on the job for these fields where it gets applied. Let's get started with terminology. Center of gravity in course books, test books, guide books for uh, forklift operator certification might be indicated with the letters CG that's easy to print or if the course book write, uh, writers took the effort they might use this symbol there for indicating the center of uh, gravity in, in the middle of a load, uh, loaded on uh, forklifts of a forklift truck, some such thing. So that symbol is used and CG is also used. The, the center of gravity is actually a term that's not too precise. It's a butchered and abbreviated term. Gravity is a force. It doesn't have a center for a starter. Gravity as a force has a direction which, in which direction it acts and it has a magnitude such as five newtons of force port side, whatever, east. It has a direction and a magnitude. It doesn't have a center. Now, center of mass is, uh, might be more intuitive. You can imagine the mass of something, a mass of motorcycle and mass centralization is such a concept in motorcycle design or uh, aircraft design. Well, mass uh, can be somewhat centralized but the center of mass or center of gravity is not mass and is not made of mass. So these two expressions or terms are somewhat imprecise. A better one would be, with more words inserted, would be center of gravity could be visualized as a center about which the object balances or center at which gravity seems to act on an object. So in case of a motorcycle, somewhere here in the heavy engine, somewhere here is the, its center of gravity somewhere, uh, depending on the design, could be lower, could be higher, could be a little bit fore or aft or wherever it is, depending on if it's a full tank of gas or whatever. A center of gravity could be visualized that it's a point in the motorcycle at which gravity acts on this motorcycle and pulls it down or sideways, whichever the case it is, whatever the vehicle is actually doing. Same for aircraft and same for ships. Now, one good working definition for center of gravity, so we, we can insert all of these words at center at which, or a point at which gravity seems to act or acts on an object. But uh, another working one that I'm gonna be using often is, uh, the center of gravity is a point at which an, at which an object balances. And this is really easy to conceptualize and, and envision with just a paper and a pencil. If I drew a square here, just a, or a rectangle, or any kind of two-dimensional polygon, whatever, regular, or any kind of polygon on the sheet of paper, let's go with a rectangle, and if I drew its diagonals both ways, where the diagonals intersect, that's where its center of gravity is. It's easy to see it if you cut it out from the paper. Now it's gonna be not a 2D shape, it's gonna be a 3D shape. And if you put it on your fingertip, it's gonna balance at the intersection of the diagonals. So that's where a rectangles or a squares uh, center of gravity is. You can do this with a regular pentagon or whatever, a star, other regular shapes. We can do this with a little thicker material over here. I have another rectangle-ish looking thing. Of course, it's got batteries in it. If I drew the center 
or the diagonals of this one at the intersection of the diagonals, this object, of course, doesn't balance because the batteries are heavier on one side. You can find e very, very easily the center of gravity at any object. Just find a point where it balances very straightforward, somewhere there between, I don't know, the top battery and this one in the, uh, in the bottom. So somewhere in the middle is its center of gravity. It balances there, very straightforward. Y you did this when you were a kid. If you put a pen, find this halfway point, it's not going to balance there because the cap is heavier. So you're going to have to shift it just a little bit towards the cap. Eventually, you'll find a point where it actually balances. Just give me a sec there, that's a little bit overdone there. Yeah, it works like a seesaw or tira or whatever, uh, whatever market, whatever you grew up with and whatever terms you used. So there it balances, it's very easy. Exactly the same, this is just one way to find the center of gravity. Uh, there are other approaches, geometric and uh, you can also suspend items to find their center of gravity. It's, it, that method is really important for hoisting and rigging, comes up later. But for now we're just going to stick with this one. So it's a point, center of gravity is a point, a fancy name for a point at which an object balances thereabouts. Now, the center of gravity, uh, I have uh, four important things about center of gravity. One, I uh, indicated that this is not really a center of mass, it's not really a center of anything because gravity doesn't have a center and also the center of gravity is not made of mass, not made of material, no, it's not made of matter. And this is what I have in mind. Here is a rectangular prism. Okay, we'll call it a wooden block. Here's a wooden block with, a, with an assumed uniform density. Yes, it's missing a sliver. Don't worry about it. You can still find a point at which this balances, just like we did with a pack of uh, button cell batteries, there in the middle. Now, the center of gravity is inside there in this wooden block. But if I drill a hole at the intersection of this rectangle here, drill a hole there and push this dowel out of it, the center of gravity is still there. The center of gravity is not made of wood. The object now lacks wood around its center of gravity plus some generous distance and it still balances around that one point. That one point is there in the middle and it's not made of air either. You cannot balance a block of wood on air. You balance it on your finger but the center of gravity is not made of air either. The center of gravity's size is a point size. Point is a theoretical size. It doesn't have width, length, or height. It only has a location. Its location is there at the very center of that hole about which this object balances. So my first um, important um, note here about the center of gravity besides the definition is that the center of gravity is not made of matter. Uh, number two, the center of gravity, however, is real and it has, it, it is a single point. Okay, we're going to get to the single point. Uh, in this uh, orientation here, the axis is this vertical axis of the object. Another, on another face of this rectangular prism or block of wood, if I drew the diagonals again, another hole can be drilled, such as the case with this one here and of course if I take out the dowels it, it still balances about the same point there so its center of gravity is still there if I take out the first dowel center of gravity is still there a single point tiny tiny point and if I get these dowels out the center of gravity is still at the intersection of where these two board holes intersect one vertically and one transversally. This is important that at the intersection of these two axes is where the center of gravity is on this block of wood rectangular prism. So this axis, this vertical axis, if this was a vehicle this would be an axis of yaw or this was an aircraft. This is a yaw axis and this is its transverse axis here about which the object pitches up and pitches down Okay, so that's two axes, the intersection of it is a single point that's so tiny it's not even microscopic. It's, it's so small that it's theoretical, nevertheless it is real, it's there. Around that point this object solidly balances. Of course the concept can be extended into three dimensions, 
you can still see probably my pencil marks there on the end grain of this block of wood so there you have a longitudinal axis a transversal axis and this vertical axis for your pitch and roll obviously all of the objects motorcycles are also all affected by roll pitch and not so much about yaw but the third axis the yaw axis goes through the fuel tank there somewhat roughly just this is just for concept okay so where these three axes intersect on a motorcycle that's where it's center of gravity is somewhere inside the engine but it's not made of engine it's not made of metal it's not made of air it's not made of wood it's just there if i continue with the concept you see where we get to this is our laundry item its center of gravity is there in the middle where all of these axes on this sphere intersect a single point and it's not made of air around which the object will balance if i can balance it you get the idea. So, this real center of gravity is often, on, in a ship, is inside the cargo hold. This skewer here, this bamboo skewer, is its longitudinal axis about which the ship rolls, port and starboard there. So, uh, we're trying not to list to, any, to either side, but you get the idea. This balance is this way. And if I made the intersection transversally, you can see the hole through there, and probably you can see the bamboo skewer through that hole thereabouts. And the intersecting point is somewhere here. That's where the center of gravity of this vessel is. It is possible to go down from the deck, go down into the cargo hold between, I don't know, decks two and decks three, somewhere at chest height, midship somewhere, maybe towards depending on how the, how the ship is built somewhere you will find at chest height the center of gravity there along ideally along the longitudinal axis of the ship somewhere i don't know four and a half stories above the keel okay i hope that makes sense of course you can't hug the center of gravity there's nothing it's not made of air but around that point and it's not this big it's not this big it's not this big even the center of gravity of a huge ship is just a single tiny point about which the whole vessel balances and it really is important that when you set sail this be on an even keel not listing to port or not having a trim by the head or okay same, same stuff same stuff applies for aircraft but it's fixed wing if the center of gravity is not considered carefully and the helicopter is uh, tail heavy or aircraft is tail heavy as soon as it leaves the ground it's going to pitch up because the center of gravity is going to move so that's my next point the position of the center of gravity profoundly affects handling okay that means that so an aircraft can take off pitched up because the airflow is going in this direction on a wing or or on the blades you can't have lift going this way if the airflow is this way it's not just going to go up that way it's not happening same way if it's nose heavy and if it pitches down it doesn't really fly well this way for the wing to generate lift it has to be it has to have a pitch angle of a certain degrees i want to avoid numbers intentionally here that's the that's the way a wing works and generates lift on a motorcycle this angle isn't so important but it does have to balance side to side if you replace the exhaust for an aftermarket exhaust the original design considers listing on a motorcycle if this becomes lighter and now the vehicle is heavy to the left side of the vehicle uh, it's going to be more difficult to balance it. It's going to be giving. It, it's likely to give the rider an unbalanced seating position or sitting position, and it's likely to load one shoulder differently than the other. It's going to get your neck ache or headache or whatever. If your vehicle is uncomfortable, it might be. I'm not saying it's 10 degrees listing to port but it might be half a degree or one degree enough to 
engage some of the muscles that need to balance this vehicle back to vertical or if you made one side intentionally lighter. How you can check it on a motorcycle of course is suspend it by, by two lines and see if it which, see which way it tilts but of course hoisting rigging and hoisting I'm not saying suspended by the windshield or suspended by the you know but it has to be suspended along its longitudinal axis somewhere exactly so it's not something you could actually do it's not really doable or feasible in your garage at home just because you have a rafter overhead and and some chains and ropes all right but so just as a modification or design consideration if you start shifting around the mass on the motorcycle its center of gravity is going to be affected likewise if you put a load here to port side on top of the deck the ship is going to be top heavy that's one thing here the ship is going to be bottom heavy so of course the ship is going to lift to, to port immediately as soon as the load is landed on the deck it's it's obvious with a ship it's less visual or less obvious with a motorcycle and it's less obvious with an aircraft because you can't see it while it's on the ground it might be compressing the tire on one side a little more but once it but just like a i don't know a few millimeters whatever half an inch once it's airborne it's immediately immediately becomes obvious once it has uh, no pavement for supporting and distributing its weight that it's lopsided and it's going to be tilting to port or whatever so the center of gravity profoundly affects the behavior of the vehicle same with forklift uh, or rigging and hoisting if you lift this load up by two lines you lift it up this center of gravity will move immediately and swing so those people around it who stand around they can get that's why you put a tag line or a, a, a guy line on a, on a load so you can control this swing when it's being picked up from the ground also a good crane operator writes it first before picking it up doesn't just if the hook is overhead here doesn't just yank it up and swiping people out on this side with the swinging load and shock loading the crane and everything so center of gravity profoundly affects load behavior vehicle behavior and vehicle handling and load handling as well my last point that I want to make here real fast is that the center of gravity can also move add and combine the center of gravity of this block of wood will remain with it and the center of gravity of this block will remain with it once they are combined like so a third center of gravity independent of the previous two will appear halfway between the two of them somewhere there and they will have three centers of gravity but the two items combined will behave and balance around the latest third center of gravity motorcycle plus rider the rider has its center of gravity wherever that is in its in seating position I don't have a mannequin to put it on it on this uh, motorcycle but you get the idea and the guy is gonna shift side to side and fore and aft as the motorcycle is being ridden their combined centers of gravity one on the motorcycle and somewhere here in middle of torso somewhere here for the uh, rider these combine together to be a third center of gravity of course also depends on how much gas is in the fuel and everything else and the motorcycle and rider combined will balance around this new center of gravity this new center of gravity could be in mid-air not in the motorcycle not on the motorcycle could be in the air between the motorcycle rider and the motorbike just like a combined center of gravity between this piece of cargo on deck and the ship overall could be somewhere here mid-air mid-ship at chest height in thin air below the deck okay I hope that makes sense so the center of gravity can move and is expected to move especially and it, depending on how vessels are loaded or motorcycles vehicles trucks cars helicopters aircraft is loaded the center of gravity can 
move if the load moves. That's why securing the cargo was a, is of utmost importance. So this should be tied down. And even if it's uh, tied down and it's liquid cargo inside, center of gravity will still move and slosh about in it, further affecting, uh, exaggerating list or heel if it's uh, if the vehicle is in a stormy uh, condition. So affecting aircraft in tossed about by the winds, same thing can be really, really bad, can capsize a vessel, can uh, bring down an aircraft, and can cause a crash really, really easily. So I'm not going to redesign your motorcycle. I'm not going to tell you which modifications will cause how much uh, shift in the center of gravity. That's why I avoided numbers. And this is not a 20-minute video, not a four-year degree in naval architecture or motorcycle design or industrial design or aircraft design. For that, you'd need to go to college. Uh, this is just an explanation of the concept and an overview of it and why this is so important. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, comments, put them in the questions or uh, put them in the comments box below. I'll try to answer them as fast as I can. Thank you. Bye-bye.